if you say something stupid, it's going at the beginning. Yeah. Hey, does it does it look like I'm looking at the camera right now? Um, yes. Sure, Josh. Yeah, we do little like opener, little opener joke bits kind of thing. Wanna make that paper? Wanna make that now? now. This is the affiliate marketing show. Wanna make that paper? Wanna make that now? now. This what up, everybody? We're coming to you with another episode show. of the Affiliate Marketing Show. Please make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as all of our audio platforms to make sure you don't miss a future episode and stay up to date on all the latest affiliate marketing news and trends. I'm one of your hosts, Josh from OfferVault.com, and unless you've been living under a rock the past 15 years, you know that we are the industry's largest aggregator of affiliate networks, direct advertisers, their affiliate programs, and their affiliate offers, as well as advertising networks and their traffic that they are looking to sell. When it comes to all things affiliate marketing, OfferVault.com is your one-stop shop. Alongside of me, we also have Adam Young, the CEO of Ringba, the best call tracking platform in the game. If you need help tracking your calls or anything related to paper call tracking, you definitely need to check out Ringba. We also have Harrison Gewurz, enough said, and our special guest today, Matt McAvoy, the CEO of Max Bounty, one of the most successful and most established CPA affiliate networks in the space. Matt, I'm going to toss this to you. Have you ever heard a longer podcast intro in your life? Well, that was pretty impressive. Now, now, what I'm really hoping for is the legal disclaimer that I heard in the other ones to come next. So are yes. we doing that? Or? Yeah, that's we've what's actually, up. That's what's up. Yes. We've actually shortened it. Now we're just saying, everybody, per usual, please get your own fucking legal advice. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, Matt, what's going on, man? How you doing? Where are you talking to us from today? Oh, all is good. Um, I am talking to you from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Nice and snowy. Um, and I say that in a not very happy voice. <laughs> yeah, well, I can relate here in Cleveland. It's, it's about 30, 40 degrees and raining, uh, which is warm for us this time of year. What's up, Adam? Hey, man, that was a great intro. Like, your last three were terrible. And that one just exceeded expectations. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. We, well, we you, appreciate the effort. <laughs> I was going to say, for any of our viewers Five stars. That, any of our viewers that were watching last week, they, they saw my job as co-host was in, uh, in I don't know, it was, it was at, at risk, jeopardy. let's put it that way. It was jeopardy in jeopardy, the that's word. the word, that's the word. Uh, Harrison. Well, I got multiple text messages from people that were like, bro, Josh is awesome, don't, don't cancel Josh. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm about to I got one, I got here. one like that too. I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you to all of uh, all of you who are showing me support in the industry. Harrison, what's going on? Having a good day, man. I have the best weather of all of you guys, so I'm just going to gloat for a sec and say that it's cold. It's over 70 degrees today. It's great. Awesome. So I actually have some news to share with our audience. We haven't released this uh, through Offer Vault yet, so this is the first time we're actually putting it out there. But once again, Max Bounty has been voted by the Offer Vault uh, users and audience as their favorite top CPA network. Matt, congrats! You did it again. I believe. Thank you. I believe. Uh, <laughs> I believe that's actually the third year in a row, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, I kind of wanted to dive into what your thoughts are on this. You know, everybody I hope knows about Max Bounty. Um, you guys are pretty present at the shows and pretty present online. So I wanted to know, what do you attribute this consecutive three-peat championship of top CPA network to? What core values within the company do you think are really, you know, responsible for people coming back to Max Bounty and constantly looking to you guys as a leader in the affiliate network space? Uh, well, well, thanks. First of all, I, I appreciate that uh, <laughs> that that intro and you know, adding uh, that we're you know a three-peat, but. Um, you know, I, we've certainly been around a long time, like you mentioned. Um, you know, we've we've certainly, you know, over the years, I think, proven that we're we're very trustworthy. You know, as a network, and I think that's you know obviously massive in this space. I mean, if 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 I was to list off the networks that were around when we started, um, you know, probably a lot of people watching this wouldn't even know who they are. Um, you know, because so many of them are, are gone now. 
So I, I think when it comes to our affiliate base, you know, there's certainly that trust and obviously that, you know, we're, we're you're going to pay people, um, you know, we're, we're always going to pay you on time. We've never, you know, missed a payment, um, you know, and, and also be you know, completely transparent and honest, you know, while, you know, while we're working together. Um, you know, as, as a network, we have, a, you know, a huge amount of campaigns, right? I mean, we have you know, over 2,500 active campaigns, you know, you name the vertical where we're probably in that. In, in, in that vertical. And, you know, we draw a lot of affiliates because of that, you know, because we're not just, you know, a finance network, we're not just a, you know, a diet network. So, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of affiliates that come in, you know, looking for different types of offers, um, you know, and, 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 you know, that goes into the advertiser side of it as well, you know, because we have experience in, in so many of these campaigns, you know, we're, we're able to bring on, you know, a, a ton of different advertisers and keep them happy because we have that, that experience. Matt, is that, Matt, I have a question for you. Hold up, Josh. I have a question for you. And I don't know if you're willing to answer it, but I would love to know how much money lifetime has max bounty paid out to affiliates. Uh, we have paid out. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I, I'll give a ballpark. I mean, it's, it's, I'll take much what you give me, baby. Uh, higher than it's not quite a billion, so somewhere between you know half a billion and a billion. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's a lot and, of money. And and you mentioned Max Bounty's been around for a really long time. I remember being literally thirteen and talking to your original founders and being an affiliate. So what year was Max Bounty founded in? Just for reference, we were founded in in two thousand and four. Uh, you know, I started and that I was, was 12 you know, years old. Very nice. Right. right. I, you know, I actually remember, you know, seeing you at your first show, you know, in, in Vegas, walking around, um, yeah. young Harrison. Um, why don't we talk well, more about that? What was Harrison? Uh, I don't what know what you're he, talking about. What did he look like? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ask again, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I remember Max Bounty when I joined Offer Vault, um, about six or seven years ago. Uh, I was told Max Bounty was one of the OG clients of Offer Vault, which was established in 2007. So you guys were in the space just a few years before Offer Vault. So you've been around forever. I know you mentioned um, you're not just a finance network. You're not just a diet network. By the way, shots fired at all those specific finance and diet networks. You heard it first. Matt <laughs> has a lot of beef with you. But I wanted to talk to you about the process of your offers, maybe maybe walk us through one or two of like your better performing offers right now during this time of year and kind of like, let's do a deep dive on what goes into it, how it works, how the back end works, what the clients want to see, all that stuff. So what are a few offers that are killing it for you right now? And what's that like start to finish process kind of look like? Oh, yeah, there, there's certainly quite a few, especially this time of year. I mean, once we get into sort of the end of the year, December, you know, budgets start getting eaten up, you know, affiliates start to, to kind of, you know, get in that holiday mindset. So, you know, going into the new year is always, always great because we have, you know, budgets back, all the offers are back and affiliates are ready to sort of, you know, run full, full bore. Um, you know, one of the things you know, I mentioned kind of, kind of earlier that we have so many campaigns, but one of the good things about us is as a company, we're really diverse in how our volume is spread out. So I'll, I'll touch on on, on, on a handful of, you know, different campaigns, just because we are in so many verticals, give you kind of a, you know, an idea. If you look at our top 10, you know, our, our, our top campaign is, you know, 7%, you know, of our, of our overall revenue. You know, the 10th is, you know, 2% or less actually. So it, it drops off pretty drastically from there. So, um, but obviously, you know, this time of year, you know, I mentioned, you know, the diet, uh, the diet networks fired some some, some shots there. Um, you know, obviously that is you know something that's strong this time of year. We don't do a ton in the sort of Nutra space, but more in the the branded. You know, the Nutra system is a big campaign for us. Noom is a big campaign this time of year. So um, those are two offers that similar space, but you know different different sort of setups you know when you look at something like Nutrisystem you know that's a campaign that's paying out you know roughly you know 185 dollars a sale you know on a flat rate to to affiliates offering quite a few different options when it comes to to traffic types allowed um but that's on a straight sale so you know the way Nutrisystem you know works they have different monthly plans depending on how much 
you know, one you're looking to spend, you know, what your goal is, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, um, you know, and the pricing can range anywhere from a few hundred dollars a month to, you know, over 450, 500, depending on you know, what meal plan you, you take on. So, you know, that, that's a flat payout to, to the affiliate that 185, you know, Nutrisystem is really looking at one, what that average order value is, you know, at that, that time of purchase. And then, you know, what the long-term value is, you know, from that affiliate. So, you know, it's, it's, that's a pretty straightforward campaign and that, you know, really they can tell pretty quickly if, if, you know, a source is profitable or not. Um, the What's flip the side Alpha funnel look like for Nutra system, it, it, you know, like are the affiliates just driving traffic to the landing page or are they running users through some type of funnel to get them excited about it and build rapport? Like, what do you generally see for those types of campaigns? We've seen both be successful. You know, we've seen the guys that drive just direct to, to, to the landing page. We've also seen some some good success with, um, you know, the, the sort of blog style landing page that's, you know, a, you know, a long-winded, almost seemingly too long um, in, in, in yeah. explanation of how it worked and how well it does. Um, but we've actually seen that convert sometimes higher than just, just straight to the landing page. Uh, the intent's so much higher from the consumer when they do get down. You know, same, same sort of logic as the VSL pages, um, you know, that you look at them and you can't, you know, I remember when those started to become popular and, you know, looking at them and I couldn't wrap my head around like it. The 40 initially. minute video, it's wild. Yeah. I, st you know, I still don't understand it, but I know it converts. And, and we have them for other products too. And, you know, it's still mind blowing to me. And you go back, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, and you think about the Nutra space. And, you know, I remember one of the first deals I brought on, you know, you go back a million years, it was, you know, an incentive allowed trial, you know, acai offer, you know, $1, you know, Did pay that the last for a while? Uh, it lasted <laughs> <a while. laughs> like well, one month of rebills and they nuked it exactly remove but, the incent allowed term yeah but i mean those were always the same landing page right it was always the same you know same girl on the landing page you know same form very simple and then the vsls came in and i was like how is this possibly going to work who's going to sit here for for an hour can you put a you know call to action on this? No, we don't do that, but it works. So you know we've we've seen the same thing with with you know Nutrisystem for example, um, with that sort of blog style um, content type site, um, but as well just a lot just driving you know directly to that landing page as well. You and mentioned since, that it's you mentioned that it's they're very quick to determine the quality. So is it because it's a straight sale purchase, or is it because it's a pretty fast recurring or like why do you think that? And I guess how long does it take if I'm a new affiliate and I start running Nutrisystem, does it take for them to come and tell you, hey, we want more from this affiliate or turn them off? Yeah, for, for Nutrisystem, it, it would be, you know, pretty quick, you know, just because of that fact that, you know, the initial sale, as much as they break it down in pricing uh, on the landing page by week, they're still hitting you with that uh, one month charge up front. So the card value should always be more than that CPA that they're they're paying out. Uh, so you know, within you know, even a few days, if there's volume there, wow. you know, they they would they would know. Um, a little bit faster than that acai berry advertiser uh, that was waiting on their <laughs> thirty day re twenty two week rebill and thirty day rebill. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, new news a little bit different in that you know that's a trial offer, right? That's you know a lower payout. You know, you're looking at. You know, the same the same kind of demo obviously a very different product um but you know still the same mindset still the same you know user that's looking to 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 lose weight um you know you're looking at a pay up that's more in the 20 dollar range uh we've tried a couple of different trial lengths with them uh seven day and 14 day uh right now we're doing the seven day just to try and get uh, when we test new sources, you know, a quicker read on that quality, you know, with, with that rebuild, whether or not they're staying on. So, you know, that, that's a pretty, you know, simple sign up for, for the actual customer, you know, and, and they're looking at the initial rebuild percentage that they're getting there to you know, judge that kind of initial quality. And then, you know, they're seeing after that, the one month, two months sort of rebuilds, 
but they also do estimates based on the data that they have and what they've seen from, from other traffic. They do an estimated you know, 13 month window of what they think based on you know, that traffic's activity or that user's activity uh, to, to sort of de determine. But we can usually get a pretty quick read on that one too. Um, you know, even that seven day window, we can get in you know, seven to 14 days, get a pretty good idea of what's going on for an affiliate. Now, for offers like that, do they um, do they provide you with compliance guidelines for the affiliates, and what what specifically, or do they do they just ask you to handle that? Like, how does that interaction go? Because, and let me preface this: like you've been in the game forever, Max Bounty's been in the game forever, which means that your organization is very good at compliance. Because a lot of affiliates and affiliate networks disappear because. They don't care about compliance at all. They're not thinking about a lot of affiliates don't know what the word compliance means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so like, you know, I would love to learn more about how you've been successful with compliance and what some of your thoughts are on, you know, that process and, and how it affects your relationships with advertisers. Yeah. I mean, I think you're, I think you're right. You're bang on in that, um, you know, a lot of networks, especially the ones that don't exist anymore. Um, they weren't working to build sustainable business. You know, they're working to, in this industry, there's certainly a lot of money to be made. And there's a lot of quick money that's available, but that's dangerous money in a lot of cases. Uh, so, you know, our, our policy has always been, you know, to, to, to be, you know, one, transparent with our advertisers, but to be you know, very careful when it comes to, you know, new sources. You know, if we have a, you know, an affiliate kind of come out of the blue, we don't know this guy. Um, you know, the volume looks good. Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna hold a cap on that until we get a good read from from the advertiser. Um, but certainly, we have a lot of conversations with the advertiser to understand, you know, what they're looking for. You know, what you can say, what you can't say. I mean, we never claim to be experts in every single vertical we work in. So, you know, what language, you know, are are you supposed to use or you're not supposed to use, especially when it gets into more technical stuff. You know, the finance industry, you know, even something that's been around forever, like credit reporting, there are a lot of things that you can and can't say, but, you know, maybe seem logical to, to me or to an affiliate that, you know, why can't we say that in an ad? So we make sure we have a clear understanding of, of those, um, you know, vetting affiliates using, you know, what they've done with us in the past, if they're, if they are an experienced affiliate, what their history is, um, you know, we also use keyword monitoring tools. You know, at our expense um, to to ensure that there is no compliance violation, especially for brands like Nutrisystem and Noom, that um, you know, there could be those types. Are of you talking about? Are you talking about like uh, Google and Bing ad brand keyword bidding? Yeah, yeah. So okay, I have cool. a I have a question so for, the, for you. Well, oh, hold on. Let me let yeah, me unpack yeah, that just in case. Just in case anybody isn't quite sure about about the exchange that just happened. So. Uh, Matt said he was using keyword monitoring software, and that's to prevent affiliates from bidding on, uh, for instance, Nutrisystem's branded keywords because they run internal traffic to their own keywords and they control that. And so what they don't want is they don't want affiliates bidding on their keywords, driving up their advertising costs because the user, if they're typing in the brand's keyword, is um, already going to go to the brand's page. And so there's no need for them to pay an affiliate to run those ads. And a lot of affiliates will try and bid on those branded keywords because it's essentially cheap, free traffic that converts really well. Um, and so that's cool that you guys uh, use software like that to, to monitor and protect the brands. Because I would say like a lot of affiliates, that's their first go-to if they're new to a network or they're a new affiliate is how do I just bid on, bid on a brand's keyword to, to get their earned traffic that they were already getting anyways? Sorry, Sham Wow know. was Sham Wow was so pissed when I trademark bid. <laughs> so pissed. <laughs> Matt, I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna ask you a question. You mentioned vetting affiliates, and then I was thinking about it a little more, and I was like, maybe he's not gonna want to answer this. But I was gonna say, like, how does Max Bounty vet affiliates? And the reason I'm thinking you might not want to answer it is because they're just giving people a way around your vetting system. That's part one. Part two is you keep mentioning how many verticals you guys have and how diverse Max Bounty is. Um, this is kind of just related to our previous episodes. We've been talking to a lot of people that are paper call networks and 
the time of year has a lot to do with what they're focusing on, hence like uh, annual enrollment period coming to an end, what's going on next. So when you're so diverse, like Max Bounty, does the time of year really play as much of a part in where you guys are putting your focus or is it more so you're kind of like spreading your chips out across the entire year throughout the year? Um, do you want me to start with the compliance stuff first? I can, yeah, I can definitely yeah. touch on that. Yeah, yeah, that's so, um, you know, we certainly do a lot. I mean, there's there's definitely, I've seen enough, you know, blog posts and, you know, comments and, you know, it's hard to get into to, to Max Bounty, but we're happy to walk people through the process. Actually, on our on our blog, one of our, our most popular posts is, you know, how to go through the application process. You know, it's, it's <laughs> you know, if, if you're a real human with, you know, with, with real intentions, you'll get in. But, you know, one of the benefits, you know, we've been around a long time. You know, we do have a lot of data on um, affiliates that have applied, you know, affiliates that have been rejected, canceled, you know, terminated over the years. So, you know, one of the things we're doing is always cross-referencing that database with every, every app that comes in. You know, we do a lot of different checks when it comes to, I won't go into like exactly the data points that we check, but we do go through, um, you know, and, and we have not only our backend systems that are doing that um, on their own, but then once this, once an application actually passes through those filters, we have a compliance department that does physically review that application uh, for sort of final validity, and then it gets passed to our AM team. And so we have our junior AM team that actually then do the approvals, and they're making phone calls on on those approvals as well. So. And we, we do ID verification uh, as well. So that's included in the, in the, in the process. Um, you know, just upload your ID and we cross-reference that against your, your, your info you've put in. And, you know, then we talk to you. If you're a real human and you pass all those checks, you're, you're, you're in. Um, but, you know, it's, it's certainly very important to us to ensure that the affiliates that we are letting in are, are, are above board. You know, we want to build long lasting relationships with those affiliates and with our advertisers, but not jeopardize. Because I think we, we all know in this space that you know, some advertisers, if they have one bad experience, that could be the end, you know, with you and that, that advertiser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, Josh, let me touch on this real quick. I really love yeah. what Matt said. And part of my mission lately has been uh, talking to affiliates about these exact things. So the pay per call space is growing rapidly. And so we're getting a lot of affiliates that are transitioning from CPA and lead gen and wanting to get into pay per call. And Matt, one of the conversations I have constantly is you know, they need to think about this like a long term business, that they're providing a product and service to a client that they need to uh, maintain a great relationship with. And they really need to care about what happens on the back end of the offer so that they can keep cap and in paper call a human's answering the phone like they're going to know immediately if there's funny business going on and i know max bounty does calls as well and um and so i just i i think it's just so important to listen to what matt had to say here about compliance and thinking about what's important to an advertiser because it makes our industry a better place it, it brings more opportunity for everyone when we're thinking about how to actually drive a quality user to an advertiser and so many affiliates just, you know, they want to throw up a page and drive some traffic and see the stats go up. And I'm just, I beg and plead with, with them to, to be more thoughtful about this because it's, a, it's an unbelievable opportunity for them to change their lives and grow a business and do something amazing for their family. And all they have to do is just put that little bit of extra thought into it so that, you know, they can keep their Max Bounty account. Um, and then... Not only that, but I, I know for a fact, and, and I haven't even asked the question, but if you if Max Bounty has an affiliate and they see good traffic coming from them and the affiliate says to Max Bounty, hey, you know, uh, I'm really good at driving Nutrisystem traffic, but I want to branch out. Can you help me learn some other verticals that I can be successful in? And will you guide me on that journey? And I don't think a lot of affiliates ask those questions, but if you're a good affiliate and you ask someone those questions, they're going to take the time to invest in your business too. So it's really this two-way street um, and it's so incredibly important for affiliates to, to give a shit, right? Yeah, no, it, it is. And, and, you know, that's, you know, going back to one of the sort of original topics, you know, why, you know, why we're, you know, so popular in the industry and, you know, why, you know, we've been around for, for so long. It's, it's about those long-term relationships and, you know, the transparency 
that we're having with not the, not only the advertiser but with the affiliate as well. You know, understanding what the affiliate's doing. You know, we we work so hard to make deals that are beneficial for all, all parties, and maybe sometimes too transparent. You know, straight up say what we're making. You know, that, to the advertiser, listen, you've got to raise the rate. The affiliate's making nothing. We're making nothing. So if you're making something, let's let's come to some common ground, and. You know, sometimes it you know it it doesn't work, um, but but in a lot of cases that's where the long term relationships come, um, you know, with the advertisers and and ultimately you know, I think it's going to take you you know just as much time to as an affiliate to set up something that's going to live long term in the space than it does to set up nineteen different things over and over and over because you keep burning advertisers uh, over and over and over. Um, it's not a way to just to, to, to hang out here for a while. Yeah, so it I, literally is the same amount of work. It's unbelievable. You can work the same, build a sustainable business, and then you don't have to, or you can not be thoughtful, and then literally you have to keep grinding and probably not spinning paid plates. All the time. Spinning plates. You know, I think I think when an affiliate can learn the value of, of full transparency, it really revolutionizes their business and. It's scary if, if an affiliate's running stuff and cloaking or running that trademark bidding and trying to dodge those tools or whatever, and, and they see the light and go, oh, wait, I can just tell these people what I want to do and work through it. it kind of changes the oppor the scope of opportunity, like, so substantially. It's, it's crazy, but people just, some people can't get over that hump. No, do we want true. to do we want to revisit my question about verticals in time of year or was that just a bad question i, yeah, I was no, thinking touch on i was thinking yeah. i asked <laughs> i asked the two i asked a two-part question of two completely unrelated categories usually two-part questions are like these have something to do with each other but yeah i did just want <laughs> to know out of curiosity, to figure out. yeah out of curiosity, <laughs> like how are these related i'm not sure out of curiosity boxes, yeah. yeah yeah do you guys change your, what your focus is depending on the time of year or or again, is it more just a general approach throughout the year? Um, it's it's generally you know, a general approach for, for most of the year. Certainly, you know, we, we do see um, you know things like the, the beginning of the year be bigger for diet products and things like that. Yeah, you know, we don't uh, as a network do a ton uh, with with health insurance. So the open enrollment periods, things like that, we're not you know seeing massive focus. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we still try and keep it as, as sort of general as possible throughout the year. And that's really been, I mean, we're coming off, you know, last year was, was, was our best year as, as a network, you know, and, and as a, you know, a, a dinosaur in the industry, you know, I, I don't get tired of saying that, you know, that we just had our you know, best year again. Um, but a big part of that was because of that diversity, you know, something that's, you know, really changed in our business the last, you know, five years is, you know, just that percentage that you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, our top campaign is, you know, only seven ish percent of our, our overall revenue. So, you know, and, and, and that allows us to, you know, kind of deal with those peaks and valleys, you know, that you, you see, you know, if you're, if you're so heavy and say something like, you know, auto insurance or health <clears throat> insurance or, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. You mentioned uh, diversity and, you know, ASW is coming up and that's one of the most diverse shows I know of when it comes to networks and advertisers. And Max Bounty has been attending the summits. I mean, as long as I've been in the industry for the past seven years, I don't know if you guys have ever missed a show. You could tell me that. But just like kind of how you walked us through the process of the offer, I'd love to get your opinion as someone who's so experienced with trade shows and conferences to walk us through the process of a conference um, you know, having been in the industry as long as you guys, like, what are the things that you're looking for at these shows? Do you feel new business is more valuable or is it really more about, you know, showing face with your current partners and uh, strengthening those current connections that you have? Yeah, you're right. I mean, we've we've been, I think, going to Affiliate Summit before it was even called Affiliate Summit, uh, you know, way back. Uh, it was the first conference we ever exhibited at, but we're, we're always, we've always been there. Uh, we try to be very thoughtful with the conferences we do, uh, just, you know, to, to hit certain markets and, and certain clients throughout the year. Um, Affiliate Summit, especially Affiliate Summit West, I think you know, being that it's at the beginning of the year, you know, everyone's just, you know, ready to go. It tends to be the show that, 
I see everybody at, you know, everybody that we work with, um, you know, definitely new business, but I think for a show like affiliate summit, uh, if you wanted me to, to pick one way or another, it's, it's more so on the side of fostering current relationships and building those, uh, certainly, you know, we'll find new business there, but I think just the volume of, of people that we currently work with that will be there, it's, it's very, very important to us. What are some of the processes that you guys use to track ROI for your team? Do you have a pre-show team biz dev process? Like as someone that does a ton of trade shows myself, um, I'm very curious what some of those processes are. And, and before you dive in, I want to give you kudos because I see you personally at the trade shows. And there are a lot of companies in our space that the CEOs don't go to the trade shows. And as a CEO, I respect that it's a slog. And I also really respect you for showing up and putting in that FaceTime with your customers and clients. I think it's super important. And so um, I wanted to to commend you for that because I know it's a shitload of work. Well, and I see you there too. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll throw that back to you as well. <laughs> um, yeah, hustle. For, you know, for us, I mean, especially on the, the advertiser side of the business, you know, our, our biz dev team, it's, it's very targeted, you know, gen, just trade show or not, right? Who we're going after, what campaign we want, whether it's for an affiliate uh, or a specific vertical. So that pre-show biz dev process is, is fairly similar to that. You know, these guys are looking through, you know, who's there, setting up meetings. You I mean, now all the trade shows generally have some kind of app you know, and they're, they're going through and looking at the attendees, setting up meetings that way. Uh, our other teams, you know, like our advertiser team and, you know, the affiliates management team, you know, they're looking at which one of their clients are, are, are going to be there, you know, setting up those, those kind of meetings. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to, you know, ROI measurement, there, there's a few different pieces. You know, I, I said, you know, we're, we do a handful of shows a year, but we're, we're still very, targeted in which ones we do. We don't do dozens and dozens. Um, and, and because of that, we look at the value of, of being there as, you know, sort of two pieces. Certainly there's the, you know, we got this client and it, you know, this client made X amount of money. That's measurable. But I also think that there's a big brand measurement there as well. That is, is not a dollar figure that you can put on that, you know, us being there, you know, meeting with current clients, even if that client doesn't do any more with us after the show, just, you know, built, making that relationship stronger is, is very important. Uh, so, you know, we don't put too much measurement on that, but we do do some systematic things where, you know, we look at, you know, what, uh, you know, affiliates came uh, from the show. We track that in our system, you know, we can run reports and, and search and see, you know, lifetime value, what we've made from that client, but th that's also not necessarily being used. It's kind of a, an added bonus, I, I would say. You know, we're what not about, gonna say. Well, what about like after the shows? I guess if you're not really going into it like that, do you, do you tr how do you track kind of the ROI from a show? Like, are you monitoring the b new business that your biz dev people bring in from a show and kind of tracking that in a CRM? Are you doing that with your affiliate managers? Are you maybe looking at the growth that maybe some of the affiliates that are already on your network experience or, you know, that you experience from interacting with them at a show? Or would you say that it's kind of hard to do that with your kind of scale or scope size, whatever? We I mean, we, we do use our, our own internal CRM that we have to, to sort of track, you know, flag accounts, and then we can run reports on, you know, all those accounts from a certain certain show, um, you know, and, and look at that, you know, we use that more as sort of, uh, you know, interesting data points, I guess. Uh, I think we take, we have a lot of conversations after with our team, you know, you, you know, our, our, our team's, you know, generally very experienced and been to a lot of shows and, you know, you get kind of that gut feel from it as well. <clears throat> you know, there's there's some shows you go to and you're, you know, I could stand at the booth all day and walk away after the, you know, that day. We and have say, all oh, experienced is... <laughs> one of those sleeper shows. Adam and I have been like, why are we here? Um, yeah. Is it about, I, I, on top of that, I guess I have two kind of questions for you about the, the, you know, with bringing your team, how do you decide who to bring to the shows? Do you have like a strategy uh, or you pick a names out of a hat? I don't know. Well, how many people are, before you answer that, how many people are on your biz dev team? 
Uh, so for our advertiser team, we've got you know two main sales sales guys there. Uh, our affiliate management team is about ten. You know, we're 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 lean as a company, right? I mean, we're we're just under thirty people, so you know we're not uh, a two hundred person machine. We don't need to be, <laughs> which is good. Um, but I mean, we try and have a, a you know a decent spread of. So say we're taking four. You know, we're going to look to say you know have somebody from our biz dev team. You know, that's you know straight new advertiser sales. You know, we're going to have somebody at least one from our advertiser management department, and then you know at least somebody from um, our affiliate management department. And then you know, we try and depending on the show, like if you look at some of the affiliate world shows, you know it's a lot heavier uh, with affiliates. So we'll say, okay, we're going to bring you know multiple people from the affiliate management team. Sure. And then we just try and spread it out that way because one of the efficiencies we try and have is have enough people at the booth at one time that are from the different departments so that when an affiliate comes by, if, you know, the only, you know, the only person at the booth is somebody from the advertiser team, they're certainly going to have that conversation, but then the follow-up after is not as streamlined. So they're going to have mm-hmm. to now intro them to somebody else. So what we try and do is at the booth actually say, oh, you're an affiliate. Hey, I've got you know so and so here who is the director of our affiliate management team. You should talk to him. You know, not that you know I can't have the conversation. It's just the guy who's actually going to follow up with you is, is right here, uh, and then that helps the the post show follow up. I have a question for you about sort of my feelings about trade shows in general. And to give you a little background, you've obviously seen Ringba trade shows. We believe strongly that meeting customers face to face and supporting the industry. Um, has intrinsic value that you can't quantify, right? Like I think having a booth at a trade show shows that you're committed to your business. It shows that you're committed to the industry. It shows that you're willing to show up and and be proud of your brand. And so when affiliates or media shops, you know, like a five-person media buying company or, um, you know, just, just anyone in the value chain asks me if they should exhibit at a trade show, even with a 10 by 10 in a pop-up booth, the answer I have is generally yes. And I try to explain to them that it cannot be a one and done thing. Like if you're going to do affiliate summit, you need to go consistently every year. People remember, oh, hey, uh, I saw them last year. And, you know, maybe by the third year, they're like, oh, Ringba is here and has grown. And this is amazing. And now I'm going to talk to them. And so um, how do you how do you feel about that? And, you know, what are your thoughts about advising younger companies in the space to participate in the shows? I, I would 100 percent agree with that. You know, I think that, you know, over the years, you know, going to so many shows, you know, sometimes you walk around and see these new companies, new booths, and you could almost um you almost joke, you know, they're, they're not going to be here, you know, next year. Just, you know, <laughs> it's not a joke. But, That's what actually no. happens. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, it's wild how many people just give up after one show. Adam and I have had dinners with someone and they're like, hey, man, I was trying to do what you do. And I, I got a booth for my company one year and I got no business. So, like, I'm never doing it again. And we're like, dude, we told you this before you bought the first one. Come on. You got to give it multiple shows. Yeah. And I think doing, you know, multiple shows, but also having, you know, legitimate knowledgeable staff at the booth as well. You know, I I think it's always insane when, you know, there's a company and they have, you know, hired booth personnel or people that don't really work at a decent level in the company and you try and talk to them and then you realize that, oh, were you just paid to to, to stand here? And I, I find that, you know, unbelievable from my perspective, but it's crazy because you're gonna walk away and say, like, I'm never gonna talk to that company again. So I, I, I do think it's it's important, but I also think that if you're if you're straight up trying to measure the value uh, based on, you know, I spent X and made Y at one show, and that's gonna be your determining factor whether you're ever gonna do it again, it's 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 a flawed good it's luck. A, yeah. <laughs> Matt, what's your thoughts on like doing sponsorships at the show, whether it's like the coffee station or the lanyard, which I happen to know someone who really likes to sponsor once Stay in a while. Stay away from my lanyard, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, don't even mention that. I don't know. <laughs> Those are mine. You can't you should have beep them. that out. <laughs> well, yeah. So like 
is that kind of a thing where it's like we have the money let's just go for it we're not looking for any kind of tangible return it's really just a straight branding deal we don't care it's we just want to show people we can get this sponsorship matt what's your take on it because i know you guys typically just do the boots and not so much that so with respect to adam's lanyards which we won't touch what is your honest opinion on stuff like that uh, I think with those, I've generally looked at a lot of them as, as quite costly and, and probably too costly. You know, we've done it, you know, over the years we did party sponsorships and, a, you know, a handful of these things. But, um, you know, I think, you know, I've, I've said that we're, we're not measuring a dollar for dollar, but I think there's still a ceiling to that, right? When you look at the overall cost of you know, having a booth, shipping a booth, doing, you know, this, you know, sending staff flights, all of that, and then saying, oh, okay, well, it's a, now it's another, you know, twenty five, fifty thousand dollars to sponsor the Wi-Fi. I don't really think that that's worth it. Um, I don't think that a lot of people are looking at that. I think that, you know, there are more creative ways to get your, your brand out there. So let's, uh, let's let Adam defend himself here. Adam, why, why are the lanyards so important to you and what kind of value do you get out of it? They could be a good deal. I don't know. I can't buy them because Adam always does. Stay away from my lanyards. <laughs> um, so look I, look, I agree with everything Matt has said, actually. And we've thrown a lot of events and parties over the year, too. We've done just about every sponsorship you can imagine. And just to give you an idea of scale, like we've spent millions of dollars on trade show sponsorships. And sometimes it's just lighting cash on fire. And when we were newer, we threw parties and events because we wanted... Uh, we wanted people to know us. We wanted people to understand our brand and know who we are so that we had that brand equity. So when our biz dev team reached out to people, uh, these folks knew who we are. There was no way to to measure that return on investment. And I think what's interesting as far as the parties go, uh, I'll get chime asked in, at Adam. trade show. Yeah, do it. We, we, we held parties because we were excluded <laughs> from others' parties. <laughs> <laughs> that's sorry true. I, I, you continue i just had to put an asterisk on it because it's just the truth that's true that was the genesis of the ringba parties is we were excluded from other people's parties and so then we sponsored every party and held so we made better parties <laughs> yeah we made better better parties and you know what came out of that is you know we we were able to build a sort of captive audience and everyone knew who we are and then later we we stopped doing those type of events because they're really expensive. Uh, people aren't excited about sponsoring them with us. And um, it's it's actually an, an immense amount of work. And so we didn't see the value in continuing to have the same people at the, the same parties. Though this year, we're gonna start hosting Ringba only events for our customers. And those are going to be uh, before trade shows, during trade shows, and just independently in general. So we're gonna start hosting mastermind groups for paper call um, and other uh, other executive events so that I can help teach some of these affiliates how to build real businesses in, in the space. And so we do believe in the events, but I think to your point, Matt, the sponsorships of parties is, is essentially lighting money on fire unless no one knows who you are. If no one knows who you are, throwing a party will get people to at least learn who you are. Um, one interesting point, though, to counter my own argument is I actually, at one event we sponsored, I polled uh, 50 attendees at the party if they could name who the sponsors were, and this was not a Ringba event, um, and not a single person knew who the sponsors of the event were. And so just sponsoring an event can be ineffective if you don't have control over the branding. And so what we've learned in a really big way by spending just a shitload of money that we probably should have just kept... Um, is that you have to create special sponsorships with the trade shows and event organizers to make sure your brand is elevated in a way that you truly want it to see. Like for instance, we just did Lead Generation World and um, we sponsored the Outdoor Lounge. We pitched the sponsorship, we created the sponsorship, we designed the sponsorship, uh, everything but the price actually was, uh, was uh, <laughs> sort of put forward by us and we wanted to make sure that we had this like unique offering at this trade show. So when people came in, they saw us away from the exhibit hall and they were like, all right, there's the exhibit hall and then there's Ringba. And Ringba is clearly special because they are not 
participating in the same way. And so those type of sponsorships are what we're starting to get good at. And they're generally very expensive, but I see brand value um, in that. And uh, listen, lanyards are a terrible sponsorship. You should not do <laughs> lanyards. They're the worst. Don't invest in them. They're super expensive. They're not going to get you anywhere. And Ringo already owns them all. So just forget about my lanyards. All right. <laughs> so, so how many cases of lanyards do you currently have in your house? <laughs> well, they uh, usually provide them. So we don't have to worry about oh, it. We just perfect. We have to make sure they like <laughs> – I've seen it where they like give the trade show half of our – lanyard space and i want to kill them so um, we actually did do lanyards like way back uh, i don't know it was an affiliate summit we did it there was a, an ad tech i think we did it as well but we had to i don't know if we had to print them or they just printed way too many so when we moved offices at one point there were like boxes and boxes of of lanyards <laughs> they're completely useless because they said the you know they say the booth number on them right they're not just maxed down and branded <laughs> The, no. the best one we when ever did. When the organizers did, though, do them, Matt, when the organizers do them, they get messed up pretty regularly. And so, like, we're to the point now where whenever we do a sponsorship, we want all the AIs and EPS files. We want to approve all the printing, branding locations. We go through every single contractual line item. Like, uh, Harrison is extremely good at this, and it's just a grueling amount of work. You know, you might get a trade show organizer to print one side of the lanyard, but not two. So half the audience has uh, upside down and your brand isn't visible. Um, or, you know, the trade show organizers aren't marketers. So you sponsor a bar and they want to put your logo underneath the bar so no one can see it, like, on the bottom. Right. <laughs> you know, like, right. like they're just, <clears throat> they just... They're just, they don't care and it's not their money. It's not their brand. And so like, I understand your point of view. And I think, you know, your life is a lot easier because just dealing with the trade show organizers and the sponsorships is, is generally um, an unpleasant experience. And, you know, a lot of them probably don't like me very much because I'm a very demanding client and I, I want it correct. And I have no wiggle room. I, when you I get do one these... shot on goal a year. When I do these calls, like yesterday, Adam and I were in San Diego, and I was like, Adam, you need to leave because I don't even want you to hear what I was presented. I told Adam to go back to his room. Yeah, he kicked, so I could straight up kicked me out. I was of the like, room. I don't even want, want you to hear this room. bullshit. I'm going to clean up this mess so you don't even know what happened. Still cleaning it up. I've literally just got a WhatsApp. I saw my phone beef. I'm like, oh, these fucking people. Um, and it's because <laughs> we, we have really good standards, and I'm sure all of us have seen that the there's been a big consolidation in the space of trade shows. So the experience is less important to the people managing these shows, and squeezing margins like uh, if we're making orange juice is really their priority, and there needs to be a happy medium. And so that's where I come in and yell at people. Although I like to be a teddy bear, sometimes I am not. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's been kind of the piece that, that I've seen is – you know, some of the sponsorship now have, have become so wildly expensive and there's only a handful of them, you know, based on some of the shows. And, you know, it's almost a non, sort of a non-starter. And, you know, like you said, I mean, you can have these different types of events. I mean, we've done these smaller, you know, for years we were doing um, you know, the affiliate ball sponsorships and we did, you know, one on our own and, um, you know, very expensive. But then we looked at, you know, what's, what's the value, right? Other than, you know, being able to go and you can go anyway. Um, but, you know, people there don't know who you are versus, you know, have a smaller event that's private, you know, even just current clients, you know, you look at, you know, 50 people, you know, you, you spend a fraction of the money, but even if you spent the same amount of money, I'd say there's more value in that at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and instead of just giving people alcohol, we want to actually teach people how to do, uh, amazing things and build businesses. And so that's exactly. been our, uh, at Ringba, our like refinement of our mission has been, you know, how do we really change the industry and provide people with opportunity they didn't have before? And we're starting to realize that the trade show organizers are not going to give, they won't even give me stage time at all, basically, because we're big sponsors and they say it's a conflict of interest and they don't want me up there pitching or whatever. But in reality, we just want to teach people how to do things like, you know, like we've been talking about on the pod. Um, all of us have been of to a, all of us have been to a session where it's like just a pitch fest and it sucks and you want to leave or you do leave or you're like falling asleep. And so 
you know, we we talk to these these shows and we're like, yeah, like we want to get Adam up on stage and like, well, uh, no. And it's really surprising to me that they kind of block us from it. Um, but while we're on the trade show front, I, I'm curious, Matt, other shows that you guys like, where do you, outside of Affiliate Summit, what are some of the shows that you do send your teams to and exhibit? I know you mentioned the Affiliate World shows. Um, are there any other good sh conferences that you, you believe are beneficial to, you know, affiliates to go to and maybe, you know, advertisers, sorry, maybe some competitors, whatever. What, what other industry right. shows in general do you, do you like, would you say? For, for us, our main focus for the last probably five years <clears throat> has been the affiliate summit shows and the affiliate world shows. And, you know, we, we find that they're two, um, you know, very different demographics, I think. Yeah, I'd say, like I said before about Affiliate Summit West, you have a lot of really, you know, our current business is there, uh, our current affiliates, our current advertisers uh, are, are at that show. We find, you know, the geographic locations for the Affiliate World shows to be very good for us, um, opposed to the Affiliate Summits, um, and then just a different a different demo. It's it's many more affiliates, not as many advertisers, but then when you look at you know, the show in, in Barcelona um, and as well in Bangkok, and you've got the affiliates that are traveling from the Middle Eastern countries that we do a lot of business with uh, that wouldn't typically travel to the U.S. So those have really been been our main main focus. I mean, way back we would do the LeedsCon shows, but you know those those two affiliate world affiliate summit allow us to kind of hit our targets. Yes, yeah, so I'm curious how you bet. Hold, hold on a second. This is a really important question, Matt. You're, you, you know, you just said you do business with a lot of international affiliates. Like, what, how, what are some of the the vetting processes you have to deal with there? Uh, you know, depends on on the country. I mean, but generally, it's it's a similar process that we're doing everywhere. Um, but one of the biggest ones is is communication. You know that that they mm. can uh, communicate in in English, um, and and you know a big part of that is not just because our staff you know, speaks English. You know our our website, our terms. You know if you can't, most of the campaigns we have are targeted to the U.S. We have campaigns for in nearly every country, but by volume, you know U.S. is the target. So we want to make sure that our affiliates can actually understand not only the, what what they're advertising. But then the the terms and conditions around advertising those, so that that's kind of the bigger bigger uh, barrier there. Um, but one that's not really that difficult for us to to, to overcome. So you mentioned the yeah. summits and the worlds are the two organizations you focus on during the year because of how many affiliates there, the different types of affiliates. So I want to bring it back to the affiliates. In your opinion, how can affiliates do well at shows like this? You know, I'm sure having a booth and you talking to so many affiliates, what is it you're looking for from the affiliate and speaking to our affiliate audience watching this episode, what kind of things should they be focusing on while they're walking the floor, while they're hitting these booths and trying to find new networks to become affiliates with? I, I think it's important to have, you know, meaningful conversations, you know, with, with substance, you know, if, if you're an affiliate and you're already running in a certain vertical, you know, let's let's talk about that you know what what are you running how are you running it you'll see if we can actually not just an introduction right not just oh you're an affiliate oh good we're a network you know come sign up with us and then you know see you later take my card uh let's let's talk you know and see if we can actually find something or give you some examples uh of you know campaigns we have so i think you know if, if you're an affiliate if you're new to the space uh, or if you've been around i mean try and try and understand you know, what the network has to offer, not just that they are a network or not what the service is, um, would be my main advice. And then also depending on what level of affiliate you are, I mean, depending on what show it is, uh, you know, affiliate world typically has some you know, really good speakers, uh, people that are offering some you know, actual substance as well. You know, I go to those sessions um, and, you know, some other shows that I go to, you look at it and there's just nothing that really appeals to me. Uh, and, and there, there, there's some really smart people. And even if you're not in that space, you know, it could, it could, you know, turn that light bulb on that, you know, gets you kind of thinking about what you can do next. Awesome. Matt, I think I speak for Adam and Harrison when I say thank you so much 
for coming on the show. Again, you know, I always like to say we'd love to have you back on. And I really mean that, you know, we are going to start doing some repeat guests later in the year. And you have been a fantastic guest. We all look forward to seeing you in Vegas at the summit in just a few weeks. And before we go, I just want to give you the floor real quick. Anything you want our audience to know about Max Bounty, this is your time to plug Max Bounty. Go for it. Well, I appreciate it. appreciate you having me. Um, you know, Max Bounty, we talked about it a bit here. We've been around since 2004. We have over 2,500 campaigns. Uh, you, you know, you name the vertical, it's there. So, you know, if you're an affiliate and you're not with us, you should you know definitely check us out. Um, you know, an advertiser we have experience in, in, you know, most markets. So, you know, we can certainly uh, provide you with a pretty good offering, I think. And, and you know, something that we understand the compliance behind it and, you know, we can protect your brand as well as provide you with you know, incremental growth. Um, so that's what I have to say. Well, well said for Matt from Max Bounty, myself, Josh from OfferVault, Adam from Ringba and Harrison. Let's make that paper. Let's make that dough. This was the Affiliate Marketing Show. We'll see you next time, everybody. Affiliate Marketing.